Hello, KSP community. My name is Brian, aka Navyfish, and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you some of the new features in version 4.0 of the Docking Port Alignment Indicator plugin, released today on May 4th, 2014. One of the biggest new features of this version is the ability to target ports outside of the 200 meter range. As you see here, I'm well beyond 300 meters and I'm able to target a port. This actually works out to about 2.3 kilometers, uh, which is your part pack threshold. Anything, any distance inside of there, you'll be able to target a port. Also in the past, we've had to right click on a docking port and select, you know, set as target. And, you know, I've always found that to be challenging, especially if there's any relative velocity involved. Uh, clicking on the part and is, is just challenging. Uh, so I've put in a couple features to uh, help remove the need to do that. As you can see on the indicator, there's a left and right cycle button. As I click these, it cycles through every port on my selected target. Additionally, when I first select a target, it will automatically target the nearest docking port. You can tell which port is targeted by the on-screen target port indicator. That's the magenta icon that you see here in the center of the screen. Now as I move a little closer, uh, I'll start to, to cycle through some of the ports, and you'll see how this indicator provides a really nice visual cue as to which target, uh, which, which port is currently targeted. So there you see, uh, as I select different ports, uh, the icon moves around. This really works well at closer ranges, uh, so you can visually identify a port. But that's not all. Uh, it's still, you know, at, at a medium range, it can be challenging to see what port that indicator is actually on top of. Uh, so to help uh, help with that issue, I have implemented customized port names. So I'm going to right click on this port, and you see I've added a button called Rename Port. This will work on all existing docking ports. As long as they have a module docking port, which they all should have, uh, this this option becomes available. Uh, if I click on it, you can see it brings up a little window, and I simply provide whatever name I want. Let's say, uh, I don't know, port alpha. And when I do that, you see it updates immediately in the indicator itself. Now this will work uh, in the VAB and the SPH as well. So you can uh, set up a layout, you know, however you want, uh, a port naming convention for your space station. And it will stay with that craft. Uh, any changes you make will stay with that craft throughout your save, uh, so it per it's persistent. Now in addition to that, I've added a few more features uh, to the gauge itself. The first one I'd like to point out is the closure distance uh, indicator. Now this this readout tells you the distance between your your port uh, and the target along the closure uh, corridor or along the approach corridor rather. Uh, so to demonstrate its utility, I'm going to close down to about oh I don't know 10 meters or so. Uh, and now I'm going to put in uh, a big translation. Uh, so often I will approach a target uh, from a good angle and this readout basically helps you make sure you have enough range uh, so that you don't slam into the side. So here we go, our closure distance is 7.7. .7. I'm going to even make that a little closer. I'll make it like 4 meters, right? 3 meters. And now I'm simply going to translate back to the left on the screen here. I'm just watching the port, uh, the the gauge right now. I don't have to swivel my camera or anything because I know I am not going to slam into that port because I have a closure distance of 3.6 meters, which is this distance right here. So uh, you probably noticed out at range there uh, the difference between closure distance and the distance indicate and the distance readout uh, starts to to grow rapidly. Distance indicates the true space distance between your two ports, whereas closure distance is just in that approach corridor uh, direction, if you will. 
Uh, so the uh, next feature I'd like to highlight is the prograde vector and the retrograde vector. So now you can see uh, a retrograde vector. In the past, it's always been a prograde vector. Well, when closure velocity is negative, indicating that you're moving away from the port, that's going to automatically flip to a retrograde vector. This just helps uh, visually, you know, identify when when you've uh, started approaching or uh, departing from the port without having to look down at the sign of your closure velocity readout. Next, uh, I've removed uh, hard hard dependency on. Blizzy's toolbar. So you can see I do have it installed in this uh, this installation. Um, and if you do have Blizzy's toolbar installed, clicking the port icon will simply show and hide the gauge. Um, when you then deselect a target and reselect a target for the first time, it's going to pop it back up just so you don't have to go through the extra button click of, of clicking the toolbar button. But it's just a nice feature, so if you're flying around a station and you don't want the, the gauge up, uh, you can hide it. Note that if you do not have Blizzy's um, toolbar installed, then that feature is not going to be available. Finally, uh, and this is more of a developer uh, feature, but I'll point it out anyways, all of the text on the gauge is now being rendered uh, using what are called bitmap fonts. Uh, what real, what that means for us is when we increase the scale, those numbers stay nice and crisp. Uh, so this will be helpful and useful for people with really large monitors. That's about it uh, for version 4.0. Uh, if you encounter any bugs or uh, have any questions, please don't hesitate to post uh, post those on the forums, and I'll be happy to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy this version. Have a nice day. Bye.